crisis, calling criminals out. On a mission to give victims a voice. Member decapitated. Nothing is off limits. Probably because you're trying to hide something and make sure certain details don't come out. Searching for answers. to life with Annie Elise starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is 10 to Life and my name is Annie Elise. The case that I have for you today is one that is definitely a head scratcher. It is very recent. It is in so many of the headlines right now and it's that of Maya Millet or Maya Malette. I've heard it pronounced both ways, so let me know in the comments if you know the correct pronunciation. This woman who lives in Chula Vista, California, which is really not far from where I live myself, has been missing now for two months, and the circumstances surrounding her disappearance are very suspicious. So we're going to get into all of the details, but first, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Magellan TV, and you've heard me talk about Magellan TV before because I am absolutely obsessed with them. They are a new documentary streaming service with over 3,000 documentaries available to stream. I, of course, always find myself poking around in their true crime genre. However, they have so many more genres to offer. I myself just finished watching the documentary on eight-year-old Sasha Lee Cook, who vanished in 2008, and let me tell you, there is so much good information if you have been following that case. Magellan is also adding new documentaries all of the time. I've actually had a little bit of a sneak peek exclusive look into the new true crime documentaries that they're adding soon, and I'm telling you, you are going to love all of them. And because Magellan is so amazing, they are offering all of you 10 to lifers a free month long trial. Try it out, see what you think. All you have to do is click that link in the description box below and you can start your risk free trial. For those of you who have already tried Magellan and have reached out to me to tell me how much you love it, thank you. I appreciate hearing your feedback. And those of you who haven't tried it yet, I promise you're going to like it. Thank you, Magellan TV, for sponsoring today's video and for being such an amazing partner with the 10 to Life channel. Now let's jump right into today's case. The video format that I did today on the case is a bit different than previous videos I've done. So please don't forget in the comments below, let me know your feedback. Let me know if you like this new format or if you prefer I go back to the old way. So let's jump right into all of these crazy, insane details surrounding the case of missing mother Maya. Today's case takes us to Chula Vista, California. Chula Vista is the second largest city in San Diego County in Southern California, a city that is just a few miles from the California and Mexico border and also has many nearby beautiful beaches. There lives 39-year-old May Millet, who also goes by Maya. Maya is the wife of Larry Millette and a loving mom to three kids aged 4, 9, and 11. Maya is a proud Jeep owner and motorcycle rider. When she's not working, Maya was often taking her kids to their many activities and just being your average everyday mom. Maya is a defense contractor at the Naval Base in San Diego. She loves guitar and she loves to sing. Wow. So how did someone with so much zest for life go radio silent and missing without a trace? That's exactly what happened to Maya on January 9th, 2021. She went missing and has not been heard from since. According to Larry, he and Maya have been having some marital problems for about a year now. This was confirmed by Maya's family, who have said that the relationship between the two of them was a very rocky one, saying that one day they would be just fine, but the next day they would be having a major argument. A seemingly stressful and toxic environment, especially when you add three young children into the mix. The most recent argument that the family was privy to took place on Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. 
And surprisingly, this argument was over Maya's beloved Jeep Wrangler. Maya and Larry bought the Jeep on a family camping trip with Maya's sister and her family when they went to the Glamis Sand Dunes. Maya really wanted to drive the Jeep, but Larry did as well. And instead of them driving together, Larry was taking the Jeep out all day on his own. He would come back to ask Maya a question, they would argue, and then he would leave again. The following Thursday, just four days after that glamis trip on January 7th, Larry and Maya allegedly got into yet another argument. The details are unclear, however, there are rumors that Maya had begun the process of divorce filings from Larry. Maya was seen by her family around 5 p.m. that evening at her home on Paseos Los Gatos. This was just two days before the family was set to travel on a planned trip to Big Bear for her daughter's 11th birthday. A group text was going, and Maya's family began to grow confused when Maya was not answering anything in the thread. Maya's brother eventually went to the house to check on her. He knocked on her bedroom door but didn't hear anything, which led him to believe that she was sleeping, so he left. The following day, on Saturday, it was reported that Maya's parents came by in the morning and the bedroom was still locked. Larry says he found a key to the room and opened the door and Maya was gone. He assumed that she went hiking, wine tasting, or was at brunch with friends because both of their cars were still in the driveway. But why would Maya leave without saying goodbye to her children? Why didn't she tell anyone where she was going? And why would she willingly miss her daughter's birthday celebration? Something wasn't right here. When Saturday came and went and no one had heard from Maya, her sister and family became increasingly worried. Maya's phone was now going straight to voicemail and nobody had heard from her since two days prior. Yet her car was still in the family home's driveway. This was very unlike Maya. Maya's sister also knew that Maya would never just leave her kids like this. Something was wrong. That Saturday night at 11.18 p.m., Maya's sister called the police. The police got there around 1 a.m. the following morning, and after learning that Maya hadn't physically been seen in a couple of days, they quickly started working on a missing persons case. Social media posts went out, signs went up, and the community began rallying together, doing search parties to bring Maya home to her children. When questioned, Larry stated that the last time he physically saw Maya was around 5 p.m. that Thursday evening. Larry claimed that although he didn't see her at all on Friday, he did hear her around the house, and he stated that he could hear her making dinner and with the kids, quote-unquote, in another room. But he did not see her at all that day. He said that they have a two-story house, lots of bedrooms, and are quote-unquote like roommates so that it wasn't out of the normal to be two ships passing in the night. This seems very odd for a couple that has been married for 21 years and shares three children. With the house being 3,000 square feet, you would think that he would at least spot her in there once that day. Four days after Maya went missing, Larry did his first interview, and Larry seemed absolutely emotionless in this interview. My son was trying to roll over, trying to, you know, look for his mom, but it wasn't his mom, it was just me this time. So I know he's having kind of dreams about it. We've been having, uh, you know, like problems. Now that, you know, she missed our daughter's birthday, um, there's something keeping her from contacting us, so... Um, my sister-in-law is, you know, I don't really try to think about that stuff because it's like mind-numbing, but I'm trying to stay positive. I'd like to text her, you know, I don't know if she's getting it, but I said, hey, babe, at least let us know or call someone and just let, at least let us know you're okay. Assumed maybe one of her friends picked her up and, um, you know, they went hiking or wine tasting. She likes to go wine tasting to Mecula. I called her boss. I said, yeah, she didn't even log in. And that's the other alarming part because work for her is like a party, okay. like one of her, that's her outlet. I don't even know what day it is. That's how sleep the proud guy. So I'm, I, I can feel the effects, you know, but basically I'm just mentally, emotionally, and physically drained. Larry was interviewing with the police for hours on the night of January 20th. There has not been much information released to the public about this interview, and the police seem to be keeping a very tight rein on things. On January 21st, it was announced that the family had hired a private investigator to aid in the search for Maya after coming up with no concrete leads. 
A search warrant for Maya's home was conducted on January 23rd. The police were looking for any evidence they could find as to Maya's whereabouts and clues as to what may have happened to her. However, the police did not share any information about what was or was not found in the home during that executed search warrant. There was a small glimmer of hope that some information had been discovered on February 3rd, 2021. Human remains were found by hikers in Santee, a nearby neighboring community. It was thought that they were possibly Maya's, but on the following day, it was announced that they were not believed to be her remains. Another lead cut short. Now, as this search for Maya is continuing and as private investigators are now taking the reins, the community is eager to find Maya and reunite her with her family, Larry's behavior begins to shift. Larry began deleting pictures and videos from Maya's Facebook page, another big red flag, almost as if he is trying to delete her entire life completely. Then he became uncooperative with the police in early February. He stopped actively working with the police to help them find Maya. He also retained an attorney. Maya's sister stated that since hiring the attorney, Larry has only let them see his children once. He no longer returns texts or phone calls from them, and he does not come to any of the search parties. Maya's sister went to check on the kids after Larry stopped responding. She said that the kids who would usually come running and excited just stared at her with a blank expression. They were very distant, and according to her, it was a very awkward situation. And it appeared Larry did not want them answering any questions. So why so much secrecy? Why the behavior change? And why the sudden stop in cooperating with the investigation? Was Larry's ultimate goal to reunite Maya with her children and with him? Or was his goal something sinister and was he trying to hide something? Over Valentine's Day weekend, the owner of a local helicopter business gave his time and helicopter services to fly Maya's family over the Glamis Dunes to see if they could find her or any clues. Sadly, that search yielded nothing. The FBI were also consulted, and they have been involved in the case since mid-February. However, the police have still not named any potential suspects officially, regardless of all of the strange behavior and red flags that appear to have been noticed and seen by the public. On February 23rd, there was a billboard put up in Chula Vista with information about Maya, hoping to lead to anonymous tips or some sort of clue as to what may have happened to her. On February 26th, Bill Garcia, one of the most well-known veteran private investigators, arrived in Chula Vista to assist in the search for Maya Millette. He is doing this free of charge, and he said that he got involved when people started asking him why he wasn't involved. Garcia will conduct interviews, search for clues, and use drone technology to search for Maya and find an answer to this case. He has said that it is a high probability that Maya has been taken, and he is working to find out if she was kidnapped. And if she was abducted, was she abducted by someone she knows, or was she abducted by a stranger? On February 28th, Maya's family set up four search parties. During one of the searches, bones were found on a nearby hiking trail. A homicide detective came out, but the bones were confirmed to be animal remains, not the remains of Maya. Maya's sister and family have been made a promise to leave no stone unturned when it comes to finding Maya. On March 2nd, it was announced by Maya's brother-in-law, Richard, that they were no longer using their private investigator. According to Richard, the police felt it would jeopardize the investigation. Richard noted that the PI wanted to talk with the neighbors, but the police were adamantly against it. Could the police already have information from the neighbors that he doesn't want to have made public as to jeopardize the investigation? Possibly. Maya is still currently missing, with no trace or solid leads as to where she may be. Maya's husband, Larry, still has not aided in the search parties, is not cooperating with police, and is stonewalling Maya's family from seeing his children. Where is this 39-year-old mother? The 5 foot, 2 inches, and 105 pound woman with brown eyes and freckles only to have disappeared two months ago without a trace. If you have any information on Maya Millette and her whereabouts or what may have happened, please call the Chula Vista Police Department and give them the information that you know. 
You may also email us here at info 10 to life at gmail.com and we will pass your information along anonymously. Guys, this story is just so heartbreaking. This mother has been ripped away from her three children without a trace, without a concrete lead. Where could she have gone? If you have any information or any tips, please make sure you are sharing that information. Thanks for tuning in to today's case with me. Please don't forget to like this and share this so we can spread the word on Maya and hopefully get some answers soon. And don't forget in the comments below, let me know what you think about this new format or if you prefer that I go back to the old format where you see my face a little bit more throughout the video. Thanks for tuning in with me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and the case coverage. Until the next case, stay safe. Bye.